Hello creeps! Andy here. Today I wanted to talk about Children of the Corn. So this has always been a movie that I've never really loved. Even watching it as like an eight-year-old kid, I thought this is kind of lame. <laughs> Especially the ending, I just wasn't a fan of. I didn't think it was really creepy and I've never really been a huge fan of the film. And I got makeup on my shirt, ignore that. But recently I wanted to read the short story to see if I would like it more by Stephen King and wow I, lo I, I loved it. It was one of my favorite short stories by Stephen King I think that I've read to date. I'm, I'm not like keeping children in my basement. Those kids are yelling outside if you can hear that. Um, and if you can't then that was a really awkward thing to say. Anyways I recently read Children of the Corn and so I wanted to do kind of a movie verse book on it. I'll give you a quick synopsis of Children of the Corn but really my main focus I want to talk about what the story means to me, what I think it's about, why children are the highlight of the story, some interesting repetitions that I found throughout the story, a few of my favorite lines, things like that. And then I did rewatch the movie too, so I do want to talk a little bit about the film and how I think it relates to the story. I think that they highlighted very different things than the story did, and so let's just kind of get into it. Also know that I have no religious background whatsoever, so if you guys would like to um, give me clarification on certain things, I would appreciate that. And also, obviously, this is my interpretation. I'm not saying that this is exactly what Stephen King intended by it. It's subjective and it's up to the reader to interpret how they feel about the book and as long as there's textual evidence to support that then everybody can be correct. So I hope that you'll just kind of hang out with me and uh, yeah give your interpretation of the movie and the book down below. I'm really interested if this is a movie that you guys enjoyed or if you guys prefer the story more. I much preferred the story. Oh my gosh this book was so good. So anyways it's a short story in the book Night Shift by Stephen King. Oh let me go grab it actually because I'm gonna read quotes from it. So it's in his short story collection, Night Shift by Stephen King. It's about a couple named Bert and Vicky. They are always fighting and they're definitely, they don't seem to be in a happy marriage. And it seems like this is kind of their last ditch effort to make things work before potentially parting and going their separate ways because throughout the short story, they both consider why they're with the other person. They are driving through rural Nebraska. They've gotten off of the highway and they're taking the back roads. They are driving towards a town called Gatlin when a little boy seems to jump out in front of their car, they run him over and he is no longer alive. But upon further inspection, it looks like the kid has had his throat slit and he has a suitcase nearby that Bert picks up. They put him in the trunk of the car, which by the way is absolutely wild. Like if this happened, would you not just put the body like away from the highway and go and tell the cops? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not putting no kid's dead body in the backseat of my car. But I digress. At this point, Bert knows two things. One, that even if he were the person who ended the life of this kid, it would have just been an inevitable 30 seconds of suffering before he passed away anyways because his throat was slit. And two, the person who slit this kid's throat is nearby in the cornfields on the side of their car, like on the side of the highway. They are listening to evangelist ranting as they're driving through the countryside as well. It comes on the radio and Bert says something like, do you think that this sounds like a young speaker? We're going to come back to this in just a second, but it seems like someone who's maybe a teen or a young child. Anyways, in the suitcase of the dead body, of the dead boy, not the dead body, um, the suitcase of the dead boy, they find a corn crucifix and it is described in the book in um, some clarity, which they do show in the movie as well. And I thought that it, that it was, it's cool that it, it's in both. But anyways, they also pass a lot of religious signs as well. I did Google them and I don't think that they're like specifically from the Bible, but again, I could be wrong. I don't know, but they do seem to be some very religious signs driving towards this town of Gatlin. They stop at an empty restaurant and they find among other things because the creepiest parts I think of this book were the, the description of the dilapidated town, how it hasn't been taken care of, it's been overgrown with weeds and, and animals and things like that, or maybe the animals were in the movie more, but there's a calendar on the wall from still from 1964 and it's July 76, uh, the year that this was written or the year that 
takes place in the story. And so, you know, it's almost been a decade that this town has not really been taken care of. At this point, Vicky really wants to leave. She's like, the town looks abandoned. It's creepy. Can we go? However, I thought that this was interesting. Bert is determined to stay to find a cop in this town honestly just kind of despite Vicky and I just think that it's funny because I've been with my husband for 10 years and he would rather get murdered by children of the corn than tell me that I was right about something. Okay not really that's obviously a joke but I do think that it that their relationship and the hatred and resentment that they harbor towards each other definitely does complicate the story a lot more. Now Everything in the town, like I said, is kind of run down except for the church, which is just pristine. Like the lawns are mowed and there's like a new paint job and the church just looks perfect. And so he decides to go inside the church because it's very evident that whomever lives here, their priority is maintaining the church and not really anything else in the town. It used to say Grace Baptist Church on it, but the letters have been removed and set inside the church again kind of implying that whomever is worshiping at this church no longer abides by those Grace Baptist Church rules and have their own form of worship. There's also a picture of Christ that has hair of early summer corn inside the church. And there are also signs in the church and the Bible is open to the 38th chapter of Job, which I have no idea what this is, what it means. So if you guys feel like it relates to the story and you guys would like to let me know, that would be really cool. What I found probably the creepiest and most interesting part of the story is that within the Bible in this church, the Old Testament is intact. However, most of the New Testament has been cut out and removed from the Bible. And this, I think, is just like the clearest picture of what's going on in this story. At the heart of this story, I think it really is about the dangers of organized religions and having your own interpretation of a text that has gone through multiple translations. I also think that the text is saying that there is harm in applying the words in the Bible to fit your own narrative. And I think that this is very evident in the removed parts of the Bible. I also think it's interesting that the Old Testament re remains, I, again, I don't know much about religion, but from ve what very little I do know, it seems like the God in the Old Testament is quite spiteful and vengeful and more intense. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think also this point is pretty strong in the book as well. Like this is what the whole book is about. Like why the children? Why is it children of the corn? It says here when they were listening to the radio, Bert says, oh, this preacher sounds young. And Vicky says, a teenager maybe. They like to get a hold of them when their minds are still rubber. So I think it also is about the innocence and naivety of children and how it's easy to apply fear tactics to make them follow in something that could potentially be dangerous. Now I'm not saying that this short story is about religion itself being dangerous, but I do think that this isn't about following religion. It's about taking religion and applying it to your own narrative to fit how you live your life and that's what's dangerous. I don't think that it's an anti-religious story in nature, but I do think that it's just speaking of maybe the dangers that can arise from picking and choosing which parts of the Bible or any sort of religious text to apply to your life. Bert finds, he finds a book of all the names of the children who have sacrificed themselves to this he who walks behind the corn. They're essentially their god. He figures out pretty quickly, which is either very impressive or because it was time crunched, he had to do it because it's only a short story. But he figures out that these children have killed off their parents, that they've impregnated one another, and that they've come up with a new generation of children, the first of which, which was named Eve, the first woman. And he finds out that on their 19th birthday that they sacrifice themselves to this god. Oh, there's also a lot of Jesus and Christ exclamations in the story from both Bert and Vicky, which I think is really interesting and counter to the devoted religious uh, aspects of the children's life. And so I found that juxtaposition really, really interesting uh, in the story as well. Like he uses God's name in vain. There are descriptions of the kids where the girls wear brown wool and faded sunbonnets and the boys are dressed in black with round crowned flat brimmed hats. There is one child with red hair which Bert ends up killing 
the children after he comes out of the church come and rush them to try to take them away and he ends up killing the kid with red hair it's not malachi the way that it is in the movie which by the way malachi in the movie every time even as a kid turning it on i'd be like fuck this redheaded bitch like he really pissed me off as a kid but anyways um i think that's also a testament to just like how well he acted in the movie it's not malachi in the movie but i just thought that it was cool that they included somebody with red hair in the movie because that's you know straight out of the book they had very little to work with um, and then also they do have the same names and some of the same quotes and stuff are taken from the short story. However, the names are just from the Bible. Let's get into the supernatural aspect because I'm going to try to convince you that Children of the Corn is not in fact a supernatural story to me for my interpretation. If you interpret it as supernatural, totally fine. You're fair to that and you are correct as well. However, after he's attacked by the children and kills the redheaded boy, they take Vicky and they end up killing her, which I'm going to read you a description of how they killed her because it's just such a cool description in the book. And he doesn't even try to go after her. He's like, peace, Vicky. Never liked you anyways. I'm going to try to get to, um, he's trying to get to the other side of the highway. So he's trying to get through the corn to get to the highway to, to peace out, to get out of there. And while he's walking in these cornfields, he starts to feel almost euphoric in a way. And I feel like this can be easily described as shock, blood loss. He's been stabbed by the boy with red hair. Um, fear. He also ends up finding Vicky, which is how we get this description. And so he could, you know, have a heart attack for all we know. It could be anything. But anyways, as he's in this cornfield, he approaches this clearing in the corn. And this is where we find Vicky. So if you will uh, allow me for a moment to give you a description of the Vickster. She had been mounted on a crossbar like a hideous trophy, her arms held at the wrist and her legs at the ankle with twists of common barbed wire, 70 cents a yard at any hardware store in Nebraska. Her eyes had been ripped out, the sockets were filled with the moon flocks of corn silk, her jaws were wrenched open in a silent scream, and her mouth was filled with corn husks. What a cool description! Okay, um, then we have the description of the beast. It says... It is he who walks behind the corn. It says, Bert saw something huge bulking up to the sky, something green with terrible red eyes the, side of, the size of footballs, something that smelled like dried corn husks, years in some dark barn. Okay, so this is really the only supernatural part that we get in the story. But hear me out, because earlier in the story, while Bert and Vicky are driving, they see in the distance, and I can't remember if it's a silo or a water tank, or no, it held corn, but I don't think they used the word silo. I think they used tank, like a tank of corn. So does that not seem like Bert perhaps came across this giant housing unit of corn instead of a beast, and because he's either fearful or in shock or you know who knows what is happened to this guy his wife's just been killed and he's just found a bunch of murderous kids but um i don't know i don't know that this story is meant to be a supernatural one oh, or at least my interpretation is that it's not a supernatural read that's how it ends he too loses his life now let me talk one more thing about shadows and then we're going to move on to the movie the use of shadows was used quite a bit in the book and I thought that this was interesting, obviously in a 40, 30, 40 page story, repetition of something used is intentional for the writer. And so I don't know what this has to say about the religious aspects of the story. I don't know if there are shadows or what shadow means in relation to the Bible. However, it is interesting also the use of shadows in their size. So first we have Vicky's shadow and it says, her shadow was puddled starkly around her feet. It was almost noon, so very small. We also get another description of her shadow. Her shadow following as she walked back to the car earlier on. It says, a mascot who stuck close at this hour of day. So again, a very small shadow. Then we have this. The sun had stained the corn tops a reddish gold. And here the shadows were dark and deep, which I thought was also an interesting description of shadows within the corn. Perhaps to be more of a metaphor of the dark nature of what's happening in there. And then at last, when we see this uh, beast or when Bert sees this beast, it says that the corn on the far side of the clearing had suddenly darkened as if a gigantic shadow had blotted it out, right? So now the shadow is not small 
and and little it's not noon now it's midday or i guess um more towards night and the gigantic shadow is blotting out this clearing of the corn pretty interesting right do we have any more shadow oh there's one more where isaac is giving his description of what he is saying that he's the seer so god shows him things and he says and in my dreams the lord was a shadow that walked behind the rose and then lastly we have a last paragraph here of a girl named ruth who is crying it says she had conceived a secret hatred for the corn and sometimes dreamed of walking into it with a torch in each hand when dry september came and the stalks were dead and explosively combustile but she also feared it out there in the night something walked and it saw everything even the secrets kept in human hearts yeah i guess we're left up for interpretation you know but it is interesting that fear is more of a running theme in this story than like the appreciation or the thankfulness or the faith that you have in a higher being let me see if i missed anything else real quick and then we'll get to the movie oh just one last thing yeah along with that is that this god is vengeful and feared and feared and not revered by the children. So is it supernatural? I'm really curious what you guys think. Do you think it's a supernatural story or do you think it's just a bunch of kids worshiping some corn? Corn is good. I would make a religion out of corn. Anyways, let's head on over to the movie real quick. I just have a few points and then I promise I'll let you go. The movie is free on Amazon Prime if you guys are interested in watching it. It actually starts three years prior to the event of the children taking over the town and it actually shows the kids murdering their parents. We have a narrator named Job and Job is mentioned in the story but I can't remember if it's just you know the name of a kid that's written on a paper or if it's just the bible verse i can't remember but um job and his sister sarah which is sarah part of the bible i don't know but anyways she draws pictures and she kind of is the seer in this film and so she kind of sees the future and in that sense i think the, the movie definitely focuses more on the evil children and the supernatural elements whereas i feel like the book focuses more on the point of you know trying to drive home the harm that religion can cause bert and vicky are a happy couple in this movie i don't think that it really matters too much one thing that i really loved was that this copy of night shift is on the dashboard when vicky and bert are driving to gatlin i thought that, that was really cool and something that i picked up on there's definitely more backstory we see the kid leaves before he's ran over by bert and vicky's car so we just get to know i feel like the characters a little bit more the signs confuse bert and vicky where to where they can't leave so instead of bert just being a dick and wanting to stay to piss vicky off um they actually can't leave there are definitely some aspects that are taken from the short story. Bert says at one point, are you rewriting the whole thing, meaning the Bible, or, are, or just the parts that suit your needs? And then the group ends up following Malachi instead of Isaac in the short story. I think, again, reinforcing that whatever is fearful is followed in this context. And it reminded me of something interesting. I remember in one of my college classes, the teacher had to stand up and separate and say, whoever thought that they would follow Hamlet from Shakespeare's Hamlet to go on one side of the classroom and whoever would follow Claudius to go on the other. And it was mind boggling how many people picked Claudius, the person who had murdered his own brother <laughs> and married his brother's wife just to rule the kingdom of Denmark and uh yeah i don't know it just reminded me of that of like fear does have more of a handle on people than i think people would like to admit yeah sorry just an interesting memory that just came up in the old noggin here there's also a quote in here from bert who says any religion without love and compassion is false so whereas i feel like the book took more of a negative approach and i don't think again that it's an anti-religious story but i do think that it focuses more on the negatives of religion i do think that the movie had more of a powerful uplifting like as long as you do it with love and compassion it's great and religion ends up kind of saving the day at the end because they end up uh quoting this part of the bible that says the devil that deceived him was cast out into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the fake prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and so with that they're able to bring down this beast who i i think my understanding of it is that like it isn't a god it's obviously not the god in the bible it's some sort of like 
fake prophet like this quote is saying that these children are worshipping to try to keep at bay. But anyways, a very interesting short story and I highly, highly recommend picking it up. There was a lot more to analyze in there than I ever thought, especially watching the movie of Children in the Corn and I feel like it just uh, focused on the wrong elements that I think were so strong in the short story and is probably why I didn't enjoy it that much. So yeah, let me know how you guys think about the short story. Let me know what you guys think about the movie. I'm really interested to know. And thank you so much for watching while I just sit and babble on relentlessly about how much I love literature. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys being here. And um, I will see you soon with another horror video. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.